Hey guys, Ryan Hodge with FantasyLabs.com here. And today I want to show you our models and our single lineup builder and all of the data that we have in these models. So there's a lot here, obviously, and it can be a little overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking at, but the goal of today's video is going to give you a very good rundown of exactly what we're looking at, how to use it, how to make your own models, and how to use our single lineup builder inside our uh, player pool area and our Fantasy Labs model. In my most recent video, um, linked right here, you'll be able to see how I go into the optimizer settings to generate like 150 or 300 lineups. But today we're gonna focus just on the data that's being presented to us within the model itself. So I think a great place to start is actually on the model over here in the upper left hand corner, you'll be able to edit all of the settings for your model. And you'll notice that this changes based off of the position, right? Obviously a quarterback, wide receiver, running back, so on and so forth, will have different factors that we're looking at, like how many touches a running back is getting with inside the one yard line, the five yard line, the 10 yard line versus how many targets a wide receiver might be getting at within the red zone, uh, or how often a quarterback is passing in the red zone, things along those lines. So those will change. And you'll notice we've, we have some defaults that you guys can choose from as well. So what's really cool is like, you can see I've been playing around with a lot of different models, but under our pro models here, you can just select one of these from Corner or Rayvon or CSU Ram, or you can even choose like a high variance model. So those are, those are rad. You can create your own model. So if you want to create your own model, uh, you can do that as well and save it. Or what's really cool is you can grab a model from one of our pros and kind of take those templates from like a default model uh, or from like a pro model and save them as your own after you start tweaking. So I'll go back in, I'll grab my model here, uh, which I have been tweaking a lot recently and just doing some back testing and taking a look at the different things. You'll notice it's definitely not saved appropriately since we have a lot of different factors that we can still use but what you get to do here is now start changing these sliders based off of the type of lineups that you want to produce so what contest you're entering how much variance do you want to incorporate do you want to go for ceilings you really for tournaments should this be a cash lineup so there's a lot that you can do here and like I said, it can look overwhelming, but it's really not. And what's really cool is if you just hover over one of these, you'll get a great description of exactly what it's doing. So for instance, if I was, I'm editing my quarterback uh, model right here. So if I wanted to take into account that Vegas is super sharp and I'm building cash, so I just wanna bake in some of those Vegas totals uh, and spreads which you'll see we have listed right here in our data under Vegas. So if you do want to glance at it, just as you're hand building a lineup or not really using the model, you definitely can. And I'll cover some of the other data that we have too. There's a, a lot and it's great. Um, it's a great working sheet to kind of just look at this data and build just off the data, which is really great too for people who are playing single entry or three max or hand building their, their lineups or cash lineups, so on and so forth. So. If I was building more of a cash model here, what I might do is incorporate a lot more of a Vegas score and a much higher median projection. Now, I still think you need to build in ceilings with cash, so I would also look to build in a little bit of ceiling. And now I've used up 100 of 100 points, so I, I can't use up any more. But what I can do is be like, well, ownership percentile is not important whatsoever for me as I'm entering this cash lineup. Consistency is definitely important. So how often are the players producing within a standard deviation of the expected points based off of like all the historical data that we have. So I want a nice consistent quarterback. Rushing points percentage, upside long-term value, some of this stuff I might dock just a little bit. Um, and you'll notice I still have seven points to play here. So I could go with an opponent rating 
and a couple more on my projected plus minus since that's a great historical um, indicator of, of how a player will do. Now I can update this and you'll notice my ratings have changed. The order in which they're being shown has changed because I have it filtered by rating. So uh, based off of salary and expected points and opponent rating, you can see we've got a really good opponent rating up here. Uh, because I did take that slider up a little bit. And so now I'm looking at, based off of all of these percentage, or all of these points that I've used within my model, this rating, based off of all these selections, is now filtered off that. So it's showing me who it thinks is the best quarterback in this specific model that I just made. And you can go through and you can continue to tweak this. Look, you don't want to tweak just to get it to show you who you want to be up at the top. That's not the point of the model but you can go through and tweak it a little bit. So as you start to go through like, okay, maybe their ceiling isn't as important and I want a better median projected, um, a better median projection being baked into my model here and I want uh, a faster pace game. Let's update that. These ratings have changed a little bit. I honestly don't know what the order was, but you can see, I think Kyler slid up. I think Kyler slid up there. Um, because it's it's taking into account a little bit more uh, and less of the opponent rating. So this is one way that you can start to tweak your model. And this is done for running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense. So now we can go to running back and, you know, once again for cash or honestly even for tournaments, you know, you may not be super concerned about their ownership percentile, which you can see I've already slid down. And you are looking for a little bit more upside. And... Their bargain rating, I'm not super concerned about as I really just want opponent rating and market share and pace of play data. You know, we could get maybe rid of pro trends here and go back to our um, projected plays and we can update. And there we go. We got a shift in some of these, these running backs here. So. You do this for every single position based off of the type of lineups that, that you want to build for. And you can really, really start to dial in your model. And then that's a model that you can use week in and week out. You don't have to go back and build it. It just saves that model. It'll be, you know, whatever, whatever you call your model, it'll save it. And then you'll see it right here in my models, right? So here's the mod my model five that I'm working on. It, I can copy this and build off of it again uh, and let's say maybe just tweak a little bit of the running back and a little bit of the tight end but leave the quarterback and wide receiver stuff the same and you can really start to fine tune your model and and get a, a really good uh, projected plus minus as well as just start getting some of these player ratings to where you want to be for the lineups that you're building so i think that's a quick and dirty overview of the model. I would recommend going through and kind of just hovering over these, taking a look at, at what each one means and really start to fine tune, fine tune that model. Now, what I really like to do, I primarily play single entry three max, um, maybe some 10 or 15, you know, entries into some other tournaments that might be like a 30 max or something along those lines, like the Wildcat, I don't max it, but I'll play like five or six entries in it. And I, I hand build those lineups. I don't optimize those lineups. Um, and so what I like to do is I like to come in here and based off of those ratings, I like to start to build my lineups based off of the model that I've made with my player ratings and looking at all of this wonderful data that I have. So I can take a look for instance, and say, I think matchup is super, super important. And so this is a, uh, a plus minus that a position has allowed to a specific, or sorry, that a defense has allowed to a specific position. And it really helps quantify how good that defensive unit is based off of all the historical data, because a player, you know, Aaron Jones isn't nearly as good as Naheem Hines you know, different players, um, but what it's doing is it's factoring in the opponent's quality, which I think is a very, very important metric. So this is actually one of uh, one of the things that I look at a lot. And so I'll start to take 
So even though the rating for Russell, Russell Wilson is low, he has a great matchup uh, according to the trends here. So I might be like, okay, what's the Vegas total for this? Okay, projected pace seems okay. Could be better. Implied team total is not bad. Good spread, great over under. All right, maybe this could be a little bit of a of a shootout here, right? And so I can start to say, all right, give me Russ. Now let's build off of off of Russ. Let's go grab Tyler or here. Let's sort by rating first to see what my model really likes. And it looks like we've got DK better here, um, as a from a rating standpoint. So we'll go ahead and lock in DK, and then for Indy, we can go ahead and we can play Pittman or whichever Indy pass catcher you would like. So I'll just grab Pittman for now and lock him in. And you can see I'm, I'm starting to, to hand build this lineup and shape it in a way where I think that this is gonna be really good for insert whatever contest you're playing. Um, I'll, I'll pretend like I'm building something for like the power sweep, which is $150 three max. So I think not quite a full onslaught is great in that since there's still about 5,000 people on that field where you don't have to be totally perfect but I really do think because of how condensed the market share of targets in Seattle is, that Lockett is a, is, a, is a totally fine double stack here. And then from there, we can start taking a look at our ratings. Or what's really cool is if you want to, we can hit optimize. Now, one thing you can do too is in your optimizer settings, you can tell this single lineup builder here to use your optimizer settings. And, I won't go into this too much because I spent a lot of time on this in a previous video, which we'll have linked. But you can see I have all of these rules that I've already built. Um, if that looks confusing or it looks like a lot, I highly encourage you to watch the other video that, that's already on our YouTube channel about me going over all those settings. So for time's sake, I'll just hit optimize. And now we have our lineup. And as I look at this, I immediately go okay it it used my ratings um or actually i think yeah yeah it uses uses the ratings because i didn't have the use optimizer settings but what you can do is you can optimize by rating and confirm and ensure that it's doing it by rating rather than by projected points or ceiling or plus minus um etc so and you can just tell it to use optimizer settings so great there's one lineup. And look, I'm not saying you have to use that, but this is saying it's based off of some of the predetermined selections that I made, it's it's using, uh, this is pretty optimal. Now for me, I would take Chris Carson out of this and I would go back to running back and I would take a look and I would say, okay, how much do I have left? I've got six grand to lock in a running back. Let's take a look at, not by rating, but let's take a look at by our median projection here. And Chris Car this is the reason why it threw Chris, Chris Carson in, because I don't have it using my optimizer setting, so it doesn't get, so it would not have given me that if it was. Uh, but now I can go through and I can, okay, Antonio Gibson, there's a, there's a great sub $6,000 player. He's got a good, a decent rating. Um, and we can just confirm that by filtering by rating. Could be better, it's not bad. Great projection, good ceiling. We obviously know what a ceiling is. And I can even then just take a peek the matchup uh, doesn't appear to be great. However, team total looks good. Rushing TD market share looks great. Rush yard looks great. And this is over uh, the last 12 months. And then we can also, once we have the data, because we're working off the week one slate, we can see like a four week glance, which I think is very important too. Just looking at how things are changing from you know, a, an entire season over the last four weeks makes it really great. And then you can obviously see even further back than that, we can take a look at their upside. So there's just a ton of data and a great working sheet that you have here for like red zone opportunities. So if we take a look at uh, Antonio Gibson's red zone opportunities, 31%. I mean, these are great opportunities within the 10 and the five yard line. So we can even filter it like so, just to see where he ranks overall. Um, and 
and it's not bad at all at 1.3 opportunities inside the 10. So he's obviously getting a lot of work. And we know that. We know who Antonio Gibson is. But it's great to just look at this data, have it presented to you. And you might see some sort of an outlier, right? Like you could take a look and you could think that maybe James White was seeing a ton of red zone opportunities in the receiving game where maybe he wasn't, right? I mean, these are just all things that you get to look at. Um, with all of this data that you have right at your fingertips. So, and for those who are watching this later on, I'm recording this on like the 10th of August. If you watch this on like the, you know, the 28th, a lot of these projections and stuff will change. So make sure you're not building based off of that, um, just with a lot of the news. So that that's a quick glance at all of the data using the, the single lineup builder here. And as far as what I find really important and what I look at a lot are the opponent plus minus. I think that's very important to look at. Your Vegas trends. I also think looking at your red zone opportunities is big for, for every single position. Um, like wide receiver, we also obviously have our market share of targets, of our receiving targets or, or our um, receiving TDs and the red zone opportunities that those wide receivers are getting as well. So I think that's super important. And then one thing that I, I look at a lot is the fantasy points per snap, I think is great. And then your fantasy points per opportunity over the past 12 months, as well as just a players uh, plus minus as well. So this, this is something that I look at a lot too, is their, their upside. I spend a lot of time over here as I'm building for tournaments and it's, Obvious, you're gonna see guys like Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, T. Higgins, these are all guys who have great upside. And then you see guys like Tim Patrick and Nelson Aguilar, it makes you think a little bit and you go, wow, 47% upside. And then you can start to take a look at what their team total might look like. You can click into a player's name, you can take a look. Look, I'm not saying you should be game logging here, but you can see this stretch where you know he might be getting some upside. Well, take a look at that. And you can see his yards per reception. So there's a lot of data in here, especially if Cortland Sutton's, you know, still dealing with an injury at the time. And you think that he's going to get targeted less or run less routes. Maybe he's rolled out. Obviously, our rating would adjust if there really was no Cortland Sutton. And he would he would shoot up a little bit in our model just based off of market share of opportunities, which keep in mind, we're telling it as our market share of percentage for wide receiver here, how much they're going to produce, right? So look, this was a quick one, kind of about 15, 16 minutes long, but I really just wanted to go over some of this data just so, cause I think it can look intimidating, but it's not. It's just data being presented to you that allows us to digest it and start making decisions. And obviously using the lineup builder is great. Keep in mind too, you don't have to hit optimize, right? I just hit optimize for time's sake to show you something but if you if you don't think T. Higgins is a great play at forty seven hundred dollars, which I think you know he'll probably end up being chalk come week one, just based off salary and name recognition, um, or you think Troutman is maybe not the best if Taysom Hill gets a start and it's not Jameis Witten, uh, Jameis Jason, Jameis Witten, uh, Jameis Winston, who Jameis loves targeting his tight ends, right? So I think that this is great for now, uh, or maybe Pittman isn't the guy that you want to run it back with. Uh, with the Seattle or maybe Seattle's not your stack, right? You can start kind of taking some of these guys out and it's really easy to work with where it just shows you how much salary you have left You can go to your wide receiver spot. You can filter by projection and you can easily just scroll through these salaries and just say, okay, I've got 6,800 bucks to spend. Terry McLaurin is the next best option, sub $6,800. And you're not leaving a ton of on the table. I think leaving 400 on the table is fine in a tournament, turn, tournament, right? So now you have Terry McLaurin, you've got a little Antonio Gibson there, that correlation doesn't work out well. So let's get rid of Antonio Gibson. And you can really just start to piece together your lineup based off of the data that's presented here with our ratings, our projections, if we want to just filter by ceiling. So let's take a look at, you know, some of our highest ceiling plays, and take a look at those salaries by running back and we've got $6,300. So you can really start to go through here and find out what is a great running back play based off of their ceiling. Click in, use all of the data, the trends, you know, there will be news here when we have breaking news. 
in our game logs to kind of just look through their touches if you want to do some game log surfing. I think it's a lot easier to game log, game log surf here than it is on DK. Not saying that you should do it, but I think we're all a little guilty of it as, we, as we're trying to make, you know, some 2v2 decisions or, or swapping some, some players in and out of our hand builds. So with that said, look, any questions at Ryan Hodge on Twitter or drop them down in the comments below. And I absolutely see everyone that you guys say. I love replying. I love getting uh, a good conversation where we get to talk about game theory and, and what you guys are doing and how you're using the tools. And with that, run good, and I'll see you in the next one.